Professor Shimon Redlich was born in Lvov in 1935 and he spent his youth in Jezhani. During the Holocaust, he was saved by a Ukrainian family and in 1950, he immigrated to Israel. He obtained degrees from the Hebrew University in Jerusalem and the Harvard University. He became an expert of Eastern European Jewry. He wrote books and articles. Even a movie was made about his life. Professor Redlich, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Shalom. So you were born in Lvov in 1935 and spent most of your youth up until 15 still in the Ukraine. During the Holocaust, you were saved by a Ukrainian family. Can you tell us about your survival and about your saviors? I must make it very short. It's a much co more complicated story. Of course. Uh, my uncle uh, used to know the woman from the village near Bzezhane by the name of Rai. Her name was Tanka Koncevich. At a certain point after the liquidation of the Bzezhane ghetto uh, and after hiding there in a space during half a year, we moved to that woman's house in the village near Bzezhane. And there we stayed for another half year until the summer of 1944. She was a lonely woman with two little children and she saved myself, my mother, my mother's sister and her husband. Where did she, where, where did she save you? Where did she hide you? Were you in her household? Were you in the barn? And were there people around who were um, were, were you hidden also from the surroundings and the peoples around this woman? Of course, we had to we had to hide very carefully so that none of the neighbors could uh, detect any change. And we stayed mostly in a hiding place on the uh, above a, a barn with a cow downstairs down below us and uh, this was like a very primitive attic where we stayed for weeks and months until the Russian army arrived in Zhejiang. And do you know why, why did this woman save you? Did she explain? Well, you're asking a naive question. Nobody explained things. And I cannot tell the story because it's long and complex. I will just, uh, like by a slogan, mm -hmm. it was connected with a love story between that Ukrainian woman whose husband was taken to Germany for compulsory labor and my uncle. She fell mm. in love with my uncle, mm. but instead saving only him, she agreed to save another three people from his family. I cannot go into details. It's very, very complex. Like any survival story, nothing is black and white. Of course. And how did you become uh, interested in the metropolitan uh, Andrei Sheptitsky? The head of the Ukrainian Catholic Church in Galicia. Yes, it was very simple because mm -hmm. I was saved by Gentiles, by a Ukrainian woman and also by a Polish family. Uh, the subject of, of rescue, saving Jews by non-Jews were uh, was always very much uh, on my mind. And at a certain point in time, I decided to also to do research uh, of a person who saved uh, about 150 Jews during the war. And do you have any, d does the story of uh, Sheptitsky have any connection or relation to your personal story? Was the per no, no, per no connection no, whatsoever? No, not directly. Okay. Not, not directly not. I'm not one of the, uh, those rescued by Sheptitsky. But I was rescued by a simple village Ukrainian woman, and he was the head of the church. But he did on a larger scale what she did for one little family. He did for many 
mainly Jewish children, boys and girls. And this story of uh, met the Metropolitan Sheptitsky, do you see a connection between this story and the complexity of the memory of the Holocaust in Eastern Europe and Ukraine? Of course, the, 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 the important word here is complexity, uniqueness of each case, and also of, uh, of the case of, of Sheptitsky. And uh, I'm uh, very saddened to this very day, and so are the last remaining uh, 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 people who were saved by him, that until today, until today, he was not recognized by Yad Vashem as a righteous Gentile. This hurts me, it even infuriates me. Whoever wants can find enough information about, about Sheptitsky. And can you just uh, explain Sheptitsky, uh, was it a theological saving? Did it come from his uh, religious belief, uh, his uh, um, act yes. of saving it, Jews? It, 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 yes, the origin was his humanitarian worldview, his belief, his religion. Uh, that was uh, the main point in, in, in his behavior. But at the same time, he was a very complex personality. He had also to have some dealings with the German authorities because he wanted to help mainly his people, Ukrainians. And this created a very, very complex situation. And if one doesn't get into, into these complexities and wants to brand the Sheptitsky uh, a collaborator, which is, of course, complete stupidity. Uh, but this happens sometimes when people don't have open minds. And do you think these uh, act of writers amongst the nations in Ukraine, um, do you, when you look back at your years in Ukraine, is that, you, is that your memory um, of the good people? This is my personal memory and also the research about Sheptitsky. Mm -hmm. But I'm also a historian, not only a child survivor. I'm also a historian. And I know very well that there were many thousands of Ukrainians who did collaborate with the, with the Nazis or were just extreme nationalists and anti-Semites mm -hmm. and, and, and helped the Germans to apprehend Jews and murdered Jews. Of course, I'm, I'm very much aware of this, but this fact makes such people as Tanka Koncevich, my peasant woman who saved me, and on the other side of the uh, spectrum, a person like Metropolitan Sheptitsky, even more righteous, even more humane in such, in such circumstances. And last question, a final question as a historian and also as a survivor, and when you talk so much about complexity, do you think when you look at the world today, how much do you think that the world has uh, learned uh, the lessons of the Holocaust? And how can we ensure that the memory and the lessons go on to future generations as survivors are growing old and we're having less in-person accounts of uh, the Holocaust? Well, it's a difficult question, but I will tell you frankly that, for example, in the years 89, 90, 91, when the big changes took place in Europe and communism was disintegrating and liberalism was, was more visible and those big tremendous changes, I was much more optimistic about people and the world, so to say, than I am today. I'm sorry to say it, but today with what's happening in the United States, in Eastern Europe and in Israel, I'm quite critical of my own country. Uh, I am more pessimistic, but as a historian, as historians know, uh, history is like a spiral or like a zigzag. It goes down, it goes up, again down, that's the way I, I see the situation today, hoping that in some future, the line will go up again. Amen. 
Well, thank you very much, Professor Shimon Redlich. Thank you very much for that, uh, this very interesting interview and for your insights. Thank you. Thank Toda. you.